Hey guys, Tara here from Recovering Book Quarter, here to bring you a life update. Um, so it's been a while since I have posted a video, it's been over a month, and uh, some stuff has happened. Um, I initially thought that I was having a major depressive episode. I was experiencing what's known as anhedonia, which means that things that normally bring you joy don't. Um, and you just have no desire to do anything. And that's what I was dealing with. I had no energy. Things I normally love to do, reading included. I just had no desire to do. I literally just sat in my chair and was like obsessively watching anti-MLM videos and uh, playing my solitaire game, Grin Harvest Solitaire, which I love. But that's all I was doing. Um, I'd think about taping and I just could not get the energy to do it. The last video I taped, I actually did not post. I think it was my wrap up for October, maybe. Um, it must've been it. October's wrap up. And it was a absolute disaster. I, I couldn't even edit it together to make it make cohesive sense. So as it turns out, I was not having a depressive episode. Um, I am actually a type one diabetic. So I'm gonna get into that a little bit. Um, I used to weigh 300 pounds and about three years ago, I decided to make some, some changes to try and get myself to be healthier. And I lost some weight without, with just like some diet change um, and kind of watching what I ate, I had gotten a new position at work. I was really busy and I didn't have very much time to eat. So I lost about 20 to 25 pounds that way. And then I did Weight Watchers. And so I purposely lost about 20 pounds that way. Then I stopped doing Weight Watchers. I, well, I should say I plateaued for a while cause I wasn't doing anything. I was just staying where I was supposed to be, where I was supposed to. Then I would say around um, December of last year, weight started coming off. Once the, you know, the bid started, um, everyone was complaining about gaining weight and I was dropping weight. I was doing absolutely nothing to make that happen. Um, sometimes I would eat an insane amount just to see if it would continue to drop. And it seems like the more I ate and specifically the more sugar that I ate, um, the more weight that I was losing, which I wasn't complaining. Um, people were noticing I was losing weight. There was a lot of conversations about it, but I knew it wasn't normal. And I think I told my husband for the first time around February or March, I was convinced I had cancer um, just because it wasn't normal. Then I started having some other things happen. I was having heart palpitations. Um, I would get really, really dizzy. And I think it was actually the heart palpitations that led me to making an appointment with a new PCP. I hadn't been to a PCP in three years. I now understand why you're supposed to see a PCP yearly and why you should get yearly blood work. Um, I do see an endocrinologist regularly because I have um, Hashimoto's thyroiditis and uh, hypothyroid and some thyroid nodules. So I was convinced that the thyroid nodules had turned into thyroid cancer. That was that was what I was convinced of. I had an MRI done because um, I was also having some issues with swallowing. Um, not an MRI, I'm sorry. I had an ultrasound done and it showed that there, there was no changes. My thyroid was absolutely the same. My thyroid blood work was fine. So um, in the meantime, I also started having issues with my hands. The day after Labor Day, I had this intense hand pain. I could not figure out where it was coming from. Nothing hurt if I pressed on the outside, it was inside. It would get real hot. Um, I was have a, it was my left hand, so I didn't have to write, but I was having a really hard time doing other things and it was getting progressively worse. Then I ended up with a bump right in the middle of my hand here. I couldn't figure out what was going on for that. So I made the PCP appointment. And then later that same week, um, I also had the hand appointment. Went to see the PCP, explained to him that, 
hey, I was thrilled with just losing weight. Maybe my thyroid was working great. I had gone back to how I was in high school where I could just kind of eat whatever I wanted and be fine. But I wanted to roll out other things just to make sure. So he ordered just a plethora of, of lab work. Also went to see the hand doctor that same week. So this is while I'm waiting on that blood work. Um, and I had an x-ray done while I was there. I ended up being diagnosed with arthritis in both of my, the base of both of my thumbs. Um, showed him the bump in the middle of my hand. So he also ordered a nerve, um, an MRI and he ordered a nerve test in order to roll out carpal tunnel. So that Sunday, which was the beginning of November, I, my blood work was posted on my, um, on my electronic medical record. And all the people thought that it was crazy that I saw the blood work before the doctor called me, but you actually have to sign off saying that you want to do that. And I just have a really hard time waiting for results. So I'm one of those people that gets it before I get the doctor call. So I opened it up, um, as soon as it came through and I had a new diagnosis, which was type two diabetes. So I immediately was kind of devastated. Um, my grandmother died of type two diabetes because she did not take care of herself. Um, my A1C was 12.2 and my blood sugar was 311. Normal blood sugar is supposed to be anywhere between, uh, a fasting blood sugar is supposed to be between 70 and 130. So 311 was really high. 12.2 meant is the A1C is what measures your blood sugar levels over a three month average. And um, pre-diabetes is I think six, 0.5 is the high end for that. I think it's, I think it's between 5.5 and 6.5 is considered pre-diabetes. And then seven and over is full-blown diabetic. So Monday, my doctor didn't call me. I was a little irritated. So Tuesday I get a phone call from his uh, PA and she said, you have diabetes. Um, it's going to be too complicated for us to treat. So you just need to make an appointment with the endocrinologist. Okay. So I called, luckily the endocrinologist I see for my thyroid, I was able to get in with her. There must've been a cancellation in her appointment, uh, in her calendar, because they had told me if I hadn't taken that appointment, it would have been February before she could have seen me. So I had an appointment a week out. I was a little frustrated, um, because I, I'm the kind of part I just want to know what to do. I mean, as soon as I got those results on Sunday, I immediately changed my diet. I immediately cut out all added sugars and that's what I started with. Then I went out, bought a, the everything type two diabetes book, um, and some magazines, watched some, uh, YouTube videos about it, trying to educate myself what was okay to eat, what was not okay to eat. It was very overwhelming. Um, but ultimately started to learn about the carb counting and had pretty much already had the diet in place before I even went to see the endocrinologist. So when I went to see her and she started asking me about timelines, symptoms, all of that, um, with how quickly it came on and because of the weight loss, in addition to my other um, autoimmune issues, and thought that it may be type 1 diabetes, which is actually an autoimmune issue. I did not know that. Um, so she ordered a bunch more blood work and didn't want me to see um, the diabetic educator until after that blood work came back because the treatment's different for type 1 versus type 2. When I thought it was type two, I was like, I am going to beat this thing. I'm not going to be on medication. I don't want to be on insulin. I'm going to work out 30 minutes a day. Um, my diet, but just with diet and exercise, I'm going to control it. And that's just how it's going to be. And I have to say, it was the easiest diet change I've ever made. I love food. <laughs> I love really bad food. I was eating Pez like it was going out of style. I mean, I was buying like this box of Pez that had, I think about 40 Pez packs in it. And I was eating those in like one or two days. I mean, immediately all cut out. So she ordered the blood work. In the meantime, 
I went and had my um, MRI done for the um, for my hand and I had the nerve conduction test done. So I got the results for the diabetes. I made, she wanted me to go and have the blood work done. It was another fasting blood work. Um, when we have that done the next day. So I got those tests back. I think it was on Friday. Within a week, um, I found out that the antibody that they test for the type 1 diabetes, it's either positive or negative, and mine was very positive, um, which meant that I do have type 1 diabetes. So essentially, this antibody is attacking my pancreas and will continue to attack it until it essentially kills it and it stops making insulin. Right now, my pancreas is still making some insulin. Because of that, I am right now able to do a long-acting insulin at night. I don't have to be on any medication yet. Um, and I do not have to be on mealtime insulin yet. Once my pancreas is dead and it stops making the insulin, then I'll have to be on mealtime insulin as well. Started out at 12 units of insulin, had to increase to 16, and now I'm on 20 each evening. And um, my sugar levels came down slowly. I was a little irritated at first because I'm like, I don't understand why it's taking so long to come down. And the diabetes educator explained, based on my A1C, my walking blood sugar level my normal, my average was 300, maybe a little bit over every single day, which explained so much. It explained the symptoms of depression. It explained the exhaustion. Um, I had sores on my head that were but like, they were always there, but sometimes they were worse than others. I had started losing massive amounts of hair, probably because of the sores. Um, it explained the weight loss, the thirst. I was waking up like four times a night to go to the bathroom. And I just thought that it was normal. I mean, I thought everything was normal. I thought everything, other than the weight loss, my brain was just not working the right way. I was dizzy so often. Um, it explained everything. So my blood sugar levels are now, I've had normal readings for like the last week very, very good readings. My one reading was 107 and I was so excited. So, um, that's going very well. My brain's working so much better. I'm not dizzy anymore. Um, uh, my, the sores on my head have all healed up. I have so much energy. I'm doing, getting so much stuff done. It's just absolutely wonderful. Um, yeah, it's, it's going really well since it's gotten under control. It's amazing how much your sugar levels being out of whack effect. So, oh, the, so the hand. Okay. So I went, go to the doctor here. The MRI showed that I have this, it's called tenosynovitis, which is what's in here, which is apparently also a symptom of diabetes. And I also have carpal tunnel really bad in this hand. Again, I did not know. Also a symptom of diabetes. Um, they exacerbate it, those conditions. So, I have to have surgery done on this hand to correct the carpal tunnel and he's going to clean out all of the inflammation. But he said, the um, the hand doctor said that where that bump is, he said, there's nothing there other than inflammation. It's just massive amounts of inflammation surrounding the tendon. So he's going to clean all that out also. I can't wait because I can't even explain to you how badly this hand hurts. And I feel like once this is done, I'm going to feel so good. <laughs> so I am back. I'm going to be posting regularly again. I really want to, I had planned before to take, to um, participate in Vlogmas and I still want to do that. Um, I have a whole list of videos that I want to do. Unfortunately, I didn't prep any ahead of time, which was what I had thought I would do when I was planning, but life and all that happens. So that's my update. That's where I've been. I just felt so terrible really really terrible i can't i can't explain it to you bottom line is though i i just have to say if i had been going to the doctor yearly it would have been found sooner i would have had my the my sugar checked every year you know i wish i had been going sooner
I wish I had been going regularly. So that's all I can say. As an adult, we should still be going to our PCP once a year. And then whenever things don't feel good or things are weird. So that's it. Type 1 diabetes. Plus all this crap with my hand. But life goes on. I'm embracing it. I have found little tricks, tips. My diet is better than it has ever been ever in my entire life. Um, it's pretty much like a, a keto diet is really what it's similar to. I just ordered a keto crate um, so I could have some, you know, good low carb snacks um, to take places like the movies and things like that. And sometimes, you know, you just want like something crunchy to chew on. But all right, that's it. I will see you guys soon. Um, I'm going to be filming my December TBR um now so you're gonna see the same shirt but anyway all right guys if you've watched thank you thanks for listening to me <laughs> um i will be seeing a lot more of you guys moving forward have a great day